Hello, am I audible? Hello, let me check there is some technical issue. Hello. Hello, am I audible now? Yes, now I think it is audible. Okay, sorry, <laughs> there was some technical issue, the audio was not clear. Okay, so once again, good evening one and everyone. Welcome all of you, welcome back after three or four days. Uh, my Due to health issues, I could not take continuous classes for last few days. So hopefully uh, from today, I will be able to continue class daily. So uh, so today's topic is speed, distance and time. As, uh, as per the current announcement, exam will happen as per the present schedule itself. So we may have to go a little more faster to cover all the topics. So speed, distance and time. Uh, yeah, uh, we will focus on the questions more, previous year questions on gate exam more and learn theory along with the previous year questions. That would be better in the shorter span uh, to complete all the topics and be part of the Telegram channel, Telegram group and WhatsApp group for further updates. And the mobile application, Christie's classes you can download for, for, for more resources. And daily live classes in Unacademy also you can follow. Daily free live classes I take at 11 a.m. Tomorrow 11 a.m. I will be teaching the topic series formation useful for gate exam and net exam in the Unacademy YouTube channel also. So that also you can be part of an academy special classes also I have taken more than 400 free classes that also you can refer if you want further learning of general aptitude and these are some of the books I have written for general aptitude. This is the bestseller book available for CSCR net exam general aptitudes section. Okay, so let us start today's session. Please make sure your friends are also invited. Let more people join as we are meeting after a few days. I think many people may not be aware of the session. Make sure you are inviting your friends, any gate aspirant preparing for any stream gate exam, engineering or pure science stream. Uh, general aptitude section is common for all. So make sure your friends are also invited. So speed, distance and time, basic facts you should know. First of all, you should know speed is equal to distance by time formula. And speed is distance by time means time will be distance by speed. Distance will be speed into time. This triangle will help you to remember which is division, which is multiplication. So I think you already are familiar with it. So I don't have to explain more about the <coughs> speed is equal to distance by time formula. Secondly, average speed is a concept you should be clear about. If two uh, for uh, distance A to B, one person is moving at an average speed of this, another person is moving at an average speed of another speed. What is a, uh, sorry, uh, what is the average speed of the entire, of two people together? Don't take it as a speed one plus speed by two by two. If two speeds, if the distance is same and time is different, the average speed will be two S1 S2 divided by S1 plus S2. I will show you question and explain why it is so. Don't take S1 plus S2 by 2. Average speed is not average of speeds. That will happen only if distance is same. Sorry, if uh, speed uh, time is same. If the time is different, average speed will be total distance by total time itself. Or we can derive it for two speed case. 2 S1 S2 divided by S1 and plus S2. Where S1 and S2 are the two speeds. And you should be clear about this also. 1 kilometer per hour, how to convert it to meter per second. The unit conversion kilometer per hour to meter per second and vice versa. 1 kilometer is 1000 meter, 1 hour is 60 into 60 seconds. That is why 1 kilometer per hour will be um, 1000 by 3600. When you cancel, you will get 5 by 18. That is how 5 by 18 factor coming. And then uh, the vice versa, meter per second to kilometer per hour will be 18 by 5 consequently. And uh, speed, distance and time means question can be asked with respect to anything. It can be train related problem, it can be boat and stream related problem, it can be car crossing another object or people walking. So anything, all those things comes under this chapter itself. So if it is train problem, these are the six scenarios that can happen. According to the six scenarios, for example, if a train is trying to crossing a platform, that is the second case. That second object have is stationary, not moving, but second object have some length. But if the train is moving a electric post, 
second object is stationary but it is having no length compared to the length of the train the width of the electric post is negligible length so i accordingly there are six scenarios possible with questions i will explain more about this rather than focusing more time on theory we will focus on previous year questions and along with it i will explain more theory so with a very simple question we will start gate 2019 problem all of you make a try we need to finish today's today itself this chapter so all of you try this One second, I will adjust the camera a bit. I think the side is getting cropped. Any answers? So two cars start at the same time from the same location and go in the same direction. The speed of the first car is 50 km per hour. And speed of the second car is 60 km per hour. The number of hours it takes for the distance between two cars to be 20 km. These kinds of questions get involved in the question, then the question is so simple. Let us understand. What is the meaning of, I will call two cars, car A and car B. Car A is moving at 50 km per hour. Understand the meaning of 50 km per hour rather than thinking that that is a speed. Speed is some physical uh, concept understand what is the meaning of it 50 km per hour means if you are giving one hour for this car it can travel 50 km if two hours is given 50 plus 50 100 km and so on no? simple uh, concept so same way b is moving at 60 km per hour means if you give the same one hour to b b can travel 60 km same a khande mein 60 km b travel kar sakta hai a 50 km travel kar sakta hai. So, hour by hour if you consider, one hour mein kya hoga? First hour mein kya hoga? A will travel 50 km, B will travel 60 km. That means, question is asking number of hours it takes for the distance between the two cars to be 20 km. Now, the distance between two cars, A minus B distance or B minus A distance will be 10 km. Na? For it to be 20 km, you have to wait for one more hour or 2 hour, 1 hour plus 1 hour, 2 hour, A will travel 50 plus 50, 100 kilometer, B will travel 60 plus 60, 120 kilometer. So, the difference between them is clearly 20. So, for 20 kilometer, definitely 2 hours are needed. Yeah, I am just making you get into this concept. That is why I am tabulating this data. Once you understood the concept using the formula is no problem. You can use the formula. How you can use the formula? If you want to formula wise do it, as both objects are moving in same direction, their relative speed will be difference of speed. If two objects moving in same direction, once one object is trying to cross another object means definitely their relative speeds will be difference of speed. If they are moving in opposite direction, relative speeds will be sum of speeds. Some people take it, uh, misunderstand that, that um, same direction they will add up. No, same direction you should subtract because First car is trying to cross the second car, but the second car is going away from the first car. So, it is op opposing the speed of first car. That is how you should understand. So, relative speed will be 60 minus 50, 10 km per hour. That means in one hour, 
the distance between them will be 10 kilometer that is the meaning of this now so 1 hour 10 kilometer means 2 hour 20 kilometer 20 kilometer is what you need that way also you can do or you can just say distance is 20 so time will be time is distance by speed 20 by 10 2 is the answer again when you write like this you should understand what is happening then if you do even complicated questions can be done without much uh, writing and without much simplification very trivial very simple question let's go for another question then try this question gate 2019 again in my opinion don't categorize this chapter into speed time problem train problem is another chapter boat and stream problem is another chapter all are same yeah, if time allows, we can split it into different chapter and learn just, <coughs> just for the purpose of discussing more questions. But basically, this is all based on speed is equal to distance by time formula or that concept of speed, the connection between speed and time. That is what you need to focus on. Then you don't have to think train problem, this is a logic, bot and stream problem, this is a logic. Yeah, so... Focus on the concept as I tell in every class, concept is the king. Any of you got it right? Wonderful. Very simple question, just like previous question. Two trains started at 7 a.m. from the same point. Here it is. Instead of two cars, it is two trains. 7 a.m. So here the time aspect is also there. I mean the clock aspect. 7 a.m. is the time is mentioned. The first train traveled north at a speed of 80 km. So if I think that this is the north direction, at 80 km, first train is moving. Second train is traveling south opposite direction they are moving in the previous question it was same direction here it is opposite direction travel south at a speed of 100 km per hour the time at which they are 540 km apart here also let us logically understand i will call train first train a train and second train b train one hour may a train kitna kilometer travel karega a train ka speed 80 km per hour hai. one hour mila to 80 km that is the meaning of 80 km per hour na? and 100 km per hour is the speed of B, B train. So, definitely 100 km in 1 hour. So, if you give 1 hour, B will travel 100 km. So, in 2 hour what happens? Let us see. 80 km will become 160 km and this will become 200 km. 3 hour what happens? 160 will become 240 and 200 will become 300. Now, as they are in opposite direction, after each hour, they will be away and away from each other. So, their distance between them is added up. 80 plus 100, their distance. A plus B will be the distance or A minus B is actually, um, A minus B will be 100 minus minus 80, that is 180 kilometer. This will be 360 kilometer. This will be 540 kilometer. So, 540 kilometer after how many hours? After 3 hours. From 7, 7 a.m. 3 hours means 10 a.m. So, 10 a.m. is the answer. If writing like this is not, yeah, I, I agree that for higher hours that is not needed. You can directly use the formula. 
or directly use <coughs> speed is equal to distance by time formula itself because there you should understand as they are moving in opposite direction the relative speed this relative speed concept should be clear the relative speed will be sum of speed so 100 plus 80 180 kilometer per hour is the relative speed this is the direct method of doing this question uh, so 180 kilometer per hour and the distance to be traveled is 540 so speed and distance given time is equal to distance by speed distance by speed that is 540 by 180 you can say 3 hours that way you can directly get 3 hours 3 hours from 7 am is 10 am so 10 am is the answer or you can logically think 180 kilometer relative speed in 1 hour that means 1 hour may 180 kilometer distance may hoga though no trains so 2 hour may 360 kilometer 3 hour may 540 kilometer this thing you can think in your mind whichever way you do you can directly get the answer as 10 am hope this is clear to all of you please respond whether this is clear or not if so try the next question little more complicated question Okay, some of you got it right, all of you try it. Okay, so I will explain, I think most of you are confused, uh, how to form the equation here. Yeah, here direct method itself you can follow or with elimination also you can do, just a minute. Okay, so Budan covers a distance of 19 kilometer in 2 hour by cycling one fourth of the time, one fourth of 2 hour. 
that means the first scenario is 19 kilometer being traveled one fourth of two hours means half an hour on cycle half an hour on cycle and the remaining one and half hour total two hours are there so one and half hours on uh, walking by walking next day he cycles so second scenario is same 19 kilometer is traveled half the time by cycle that means one hour the total two hour so <clears throat> For half half the time and the rest of the time uh, in same two hours 26 kilometer not 19 kilometer 26 kilometer is covered if it is one hour by cycle and one hour by walking one hour by walking then the question is asking what is the speed at which Budan walks so walking speed is what you need to find so I will call walking speed as x so walking speed as x means definitely there is one more unknown that is a cycling speed so i will call cycling speed as y also cycling speed as y walking speed the required unknown as x now how you can equate what you can equate here we can equate total distance is equal to distance travel by cycling plus distance travel by walking now so first scenario 19 kilometer total distance equal to distance traveled in cycling plus distance traveled in walking distance is what speed by time so we can say speed speed of cycling is we are assuming y so y by time so sorry distance is speed into time so y into half y into half means y by 2 so y by 2 will be the one second y by 2 will be the distance travel by distance travel by cycling plus distance travel by walking one and half hour is the time taken distance equal to speed into time distance travel by cycle distance travel by walking so distance equal to speed into time speed we are assuming x x into one and half hours means three by two three by two into x so this is equation number one same way you can form an equation for the second scenario total 26 kilometer is equal to distance travel by cycling plus distance travel by walking so distance travel by cycling will be what <clears throat> one hour uh, y into one plus x into one itself because both are one hour one hour each in the second case so two equations you got two unknowns you have you just have to find the value of x how you can find the value of x yeah eliminate y then it is easy so to eliminate y you can multiply the first equation into 2 then you will get 38 is equal to y plus 3x and then subtract these two equations when you subtract these two equations you will get 12 is equal to 2x so x is equal to 6 kilometer per hour will be the answer 6 kilometer per hour that is option d did you all understood this? It's all about equating it correctly. Hope all of you understood this. Please mention in the chat whether this is clear or not. What we are equating? Yeah, either you have to equate time either or you have to equate distance or you have to dis equate speed. Here we are equating distance equal to distance traveled by cycling plus distance traveled by walking. Because we know total distance in two scenarios and we need to find the speed that is why we are doing so so this is the direct method you can do by elimination also by substituting each option and checking but as unfortunately six is the answer which is in op option for option d it will take time so elimination by substitution in these kinds of question we cannot trust because sometimes if option d or option c is the answer you have to try multiple times too much time it will take so yeah due to lack of time i'm going to the next question hope this much is clear to all of you so now we will discuss some average speed related question make a try average speed related concept <coughs> all of you try and those of you are attending this session if you are getting benefit by this session please like this video as uh, for last two three days i could not take class 
more people are not aware about this session by liking this video and getting more engagement in this video more people will get to know about the sessions and there will be bigger crowd in the upcoming class that will always be good for this channel also that will be always be good for more students to learn general aptitude also so make sure you hit the like button and share this video to maximum friends of yours so try this question all of you <clears throat> Some of you got option C, some of you got option B. Let's see which is correct. All of you make a try. In the beginning of this class, I told you to find the average speed, you have to find total distance by total time. That is very important. Total distance by total time. Here, what is a total time? That is a common mistake students make in this question. Total time is not one hour. Total time is three-fourth of an hour. I will explain why. A car travels eight kilometer in first quarter of an hour. Quarter of an hour means... 1 hour is 60 minutes, quarter of an hour, hour is 15 minutes or 1 by 4th of an hour, 1 by 4 hour we can say. So, first 1 by 4 hour, the car is moving at, uh, sorry, 8 kilometer the car move. Next 1 by 4 hour, next 1 by 4 hour, next quarter means next 1 by 4 hour, 6 kilometer it moves and next 1 by 4 hour, it is moving at 16 kilometer. It is, it is traveling 16 kilometer. If so, what is the average speed of the car in kilometer per hour over the entire journey? Yeah, distance is in kilometer, time is in hour. So, there is no confusion. No need to convert it into minutes and again convert it back. Finally, question kilometer per hour mein pucha hai na. So, definitely distance kilometer mein hai, time hour mein hai already. So, definitely you can directly find, as I told, total distance equal to total, sorry, we need to find total speed now. Average speed is equal to total distance by total time. Total distance kitna hai? 8 kilometer, 6 kilometer, 16 kilometer. 8 plus 6 plus 16 hoga. And what is the total time? 1 by 4 hour plus 1 by 4 hour plus 1 by 4 hour only. Not 1 hour fully. 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4. 3 by 4 only. That is numerator is going to be 30. 30 by 3 by 4 is what you get and now 3 and 30 cancels to get 10 and 4 goes to the top 40 kilometer will be the answer sorry 40 kilometer per hour will be the answer did you all understood the denominator is 3 4 not 1 that is very important because if you take 1 that will also be there in the answer option 30 so all of you got this idea clear i guess gate 2013 problem then another average speed related question, make a try, gate 2018 problem, make a try.
Okay. Many of you got it right. Some of you got a different answer. I will explain. An automobile travel from city A to city B and returns to city A by the same route. The speed of the vehicle during the onward and return journeys were constant at 60 km per hour and 90 km per hour uh, respectively. What is the average speed? Yeah, a common or some people can mistake this question that the question is asking 60 plus 90 by 2. No, you cannot do that because the time is different. Time taken to go from A to B and time taken to go from B to A are different because as the distance are same, time should be different. Na? So, definitely. 60 plus 90 by 2 will be 75 that 75 is there in the answer option but you cannot take that only if time is same you can do that that is what I told in the beginning of the class so either you have to find average speed you can find 2 s1 s2 divided by s1 plus s2 in the case of equal distances 2 s1 s2 divided by s1 plus s2 you can use that is 2 times 7 9 60 into 90 divided by 60 plus 90 is the answer that is 2 times 60 into 90 divided by 150 cancelling 0 and 15 and uh, 60 cancels to get 4 2 into 4 into 9 that is 72 kilometer per hour is the answer 72 kilometer per hour option A or if you don't want to buy hard this formula you can derive that formula also that is also easy speed is equal to distance by time now just like previous question total speed is equal to or average speed is equal to total distance by total time what is total distance we don't know the distance so i will take let x be the distance from a to b a to b distance x x to b to a distance also will be x itself now b to a distance also will be x so total distance will be x plus x and total time, total time will be time to go from A to B. Time to go from A to B will be distance by speed. Distance is X by speed is given 90, sorry, 60. Plus time, uh, distance to go from B to A is X divided by 90. So, if you simplify this also, you will get the answer. 2X by denominator, you will get 60 and 90. You can take, either you can just multiply or uh, you can take LCM and simplify 1690 180 will be the LCM the numerator will be 3x plus 2x that is 180 goes to the top 180 into 2x by 5x x x cancels 5 and 180 cancels that is uh, 36 36 into 2 is 72 kilometer per hour itself same answer you will get this way also you can do this question or this is how that 2 s1 s2 divided by s1 plus s2 formula is derived 2 times sorry d1 plus d2 divided by d1 by s1 plus d2 by s1 as the distances are same d1 and d2 are equal and numerator denominator that will get cancelled that is how that formula is derived hope this is also clear to all of you why 72 is the answer then try this question all of you
एंटस okay kirti that the answer for that you will get by this question solution itself i will explain so a tourist covers half of its journey by train at 60 km per hour half of the remainder by bus at 30 km per hour and rest by rest at 10 km per hour the average speed of the tourist in km per hour during the entire journey let me just check once okay i was thinking there is something no it is nothing is miss, missing so uh, the question is perfect so so the total distance let let us assume let x be the total distance total distance be x I will assume total distance is x so what happened is tourist covers half of its journey that means x by 2 distance he is covering at 60 km per hour half of the remainder that means remaining is x by 2 uska aada uska aada matlab x by 4 so x by 4 km at 30 km per hour <coughs> and rest by cycle uh, at 10 km per hour rest means x by 4 at 10 km per hour now everything is clear now so as i told no need to by heart separate formula 2s1 s2 divided by s1 plus s2 for three case it will be a little more complicated so better not to by heart it try to derive it or try to do we need to find the average speed now so speed is equal to distance by time <coughs> basic formula only remember the total distance will be what x by 2 plus x by 4 plus x by 4 that will always be x itself because x you are splitting into three parts x by 2 x by 4 x by 4 so total distance will be x divided by total time total time means time taken to cover this half distance that is half distance divided by speed time is equal to distance by speed now so t1 will be x by 2 by 60 x by 2 by 60 will be x by 120 directly i am writing x by 120 because x by 2 divided by 60 that is x by 120 x by 4 divided by 30 that is x by 120 again x by 4 into 30 it will become and x by 4 divided by 10 that is x by 40 this you need to simplify to get the value uh, of the speed the x will definitely cancel so x by lcm in the denominator is 120 so this will be x plus x plus 3x that is going to be 120 goes to the top 120 into uh, x by 5x x and x cancels 120 and 5 cancels 24 will be the answer 24 kilometer per hour is the answer is this clear to all of you please respond it is simple only again what you need to assume first that kind of things you should need, you need to practice here distance is unknown and we know that distance is anyway going to cancel so we are assuming total distance is x so and then understood the question and found the answer so hope this is clear to all of you then let us discuss for now to train related problem itself try this question simple question
Shweta reasoning topics also will be discussed. As I told, uh, now in the upcoming days, I am trying to give regular classes at 6 o'clock. If my health is allowing, till your gate exam, I will try to continue this regular classes. Unfortunately, few days due to health issues, I had to take leave. Okay, this question is simple. So, I will start explaining. It takes 10 seconds and 15 seconds respectively for two trains traveling at different constant speeds to completely pass a telegraph post. Train crossing telegraph post means the width of the telegraph post is negligible because length of the train is considerably so large compared to this width of the telegraph post. So, you can consider this width as zero. This is the case I have told when the train is crossing an object which is stationary and having negligible length like electric post pole, standing man, etc. So, their only length affected is involved is length of train. Only speed involved is speed of train only because this object is second object is stationary. So, in this question, it takes 10 seconds for this train to cross the telegraph post. To cross the telegraph post means train should cross the entire length of telegraph, entire width of telegraph post, which is zero only. That means train should cross its own length. Train should cross its own length means 120 meter. Train should cross that 120 meter itself to cross the telegraph post. So, first train 120 meter, second train 150 meter train is so definitely 150 meter it need to cover and it it is told that first train took 10 seconds first train to, took sec, 10 second means 120 meter in 10 seconds 120 meter 10 second may travel kar raha to, 12 meter in one second na? that is the meaning of speed don't write 120 by 10 understand the meaning 120 meter in 10 seconds 60 meter in 5 seconds 12 meter in one second. So, speed is going to be 12 meter per second in the first case and in the second case 150 meter in 15 seconds. Question says this take 15 seconds. 150 meter in 15 seconds means 15 meter in one second. Na? 150 meter in 15 seconds. 5 seconds it will be uh, 50 meter then. So, anyway it is speed is going to be 10 meter per second. If you are not at all able to digest that idea, divide 120 by 10 is 12, 150 by 10 is 15. So, uh, anyway, these are the speeds in these two scenarios. Question is asking magnitude of the difference of speeds of the trains. So, magnitude of difference of speed will be definitely 12 minus 10. S1 and S2 difference is what you need to find. It will be 12 minus 10, 2 meter per second. Very straightforward question. So, 2 meter per second option A is the correct answer. Hope all of you understood this. Then one more train problem we will discuss. Yeah, try this. This is little more complicated version of the train problem. But if you understood the question, it is easy. Two scenarios are coming here. Make a try all of you. Okay, I'll start explaining. 
train that is 280 meter long traveling at a uniform speed crosses a platform in 60 seconds crossing a platform means 280 meter length of the train should cross the entire length of the platform if entire length of the platform is x 280 meter should cover x meter that means this is the final scenario that is x plus 280 is the total distance to be traveled by the train where x is the length of the platform which we need to find process a platform in 60 seconds so this is taking 60 seconds that is what the questions question says and passes a man that is a different scenario the train crossing a man on the platform man just like previous question telegraph post crossing question the train is crossing a man means the train how to cross its own length 280 meter so that takes 20 seconds logically understand try to avoid formula as much as possible 280 meter 20 seconds may travel kar sakta hai to 140 meter 10 seconds may cover kar sakta hai na so 14 meter 1 second may travel kar sakta hai that means you are getting the speed of the train as 14 meter per second if you are not able to logically understand that then take 280 by 20 that's all speed is equal to distance by time 280 by 20 because here the distance to be covered is the length of the train itself as the width of the man standing on the platform is negligible with respect to the width of the or the length of the train so definitely speed of train we got that is an extra information you can use with respect to the first data given speed is 14 meter per second speed is 14 meter per second because in the first case also only train is moving now nah, platforms don't normally move so definitely uh, this first case also second object is stationary <laughs> so only speed involved is speed of train that means 280 meter long train moving at 14 meter per second is covering the platform in 20 seconds sorry not 20 60 seconds so you can equate it now how you can equate distance equal to speed into time you can equate distance equal to speed into time I want to avoid the fraction that is why I'm using distance equal to speed into time you can take speed is equal to distance by time also time is equal to distance by speed also it's up to you so total distance to be covered as I told is x plus 280 so x plus 280 is equal to speed into speed is 14 into time taken as 60 so this equation you solve to get the value of x so x is equal to 14 into 60 is going to be 840, 840 minus 280, 840 minus 280 is going to be 560, so 560 is the correct answer, 560 meter is the length of the platform. Now if you ask me, if you ask me uh, whether these steps can be avoided, yes, you can avoid that step just like in this case, how you can avoid that, you have to think. <coughs> The length to be traveled by the platform or length to be uh, traveled by distance to be traveled by the train for crossing the platform is 280 plus x. So, and what is the speed of the train? 14 meter per second. One second may 14 meter travel kar sakta hai. Or question may diya hai 60 seconds diya hai. So, 60 seconds may 14 into 60. 14 into 60 mentally calculate kiya to 840 milega. 840 meter is the total distance to be traveled. In that 840 meter, 280 meter is the length of the train. So, remaining will be the length of the platform. That way, you can avoid this writing of steps. Otherwise, one more improvisation you can do if you combine these two situations together. Once you got 14 meter per second, 280 is constant in both the scenarios. Na? The distance of train is constant in both these scenarios. So, you can avoid that only think about this x meter to be traveled if you are co considering only x meter to be traveled the difference of speed you need to convert uh, consider 60 second 20 second difference is 40 seconds 40 seconds is the time taken by the train to train to travel this much distance if you understood that idea that is an improvisation to save a little more time if this x meter to travel that 40 seconds it will take why 40 the relative speed 60 seconds may 20 seconds is the time taken for the train to cross the length of train itself so remaining 40 seconds is the time taken for length of platform to be covered 
फोर्टी सेकेंड्स फोर्टीन मीटर पर सेकेंड स्पीड में ट्रेवल किया तो फोर्टीन इंटू फोर्टी विल बी फाइव सिक्सटी दैट विल सेव वन मोर स्टेप इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सेव दैट स्टेप यू कैन डू दैट वे ऑल्सो I am just telling improvisation. How much improvisation you want to do? That is up to you, or that is how much you understand. Uh, I am not focusing more on improvisations because, as I told, in every day we need to cover a topic. Now, then only we can finish before your gate exam, uh, before your upcoming gate exam. That is why further learning. Maybe I will give a, a new course after this gate exam. Uh, in the next batch, I will try to give one more. little more detail course so anyway then try this question please all of you <coughs> same idea i taught in the previous question can be used yes jena you what you mentioned is correct 14 into 40 can be done okay so I'll start explaining from the time the front of the train enters a platform it takes 25 seconds for the back of the train to leave the platform simply speaking time taken by train uh, to cross the platform that is referred in a different way that's all so this is what the question is saying length of platform is also not known to us length of train is also not known to us so if length of train is t and length of platform is p so the total length t of train should cross the total length p of platform that requires 25 seconds that requires 25 seconds and speed of train is given as 54 km per hour 54 km per hour now at the same speed the second scenario just like previous question the second scenario is also mentioned at the same speed at the same 54 km per hour speed it takes 14 seconds to pass a man running from the previous question the difference is here the second object is also moving in the previous case the second scenario was second object was not moving so here the second object is also moving in what direction in same direction i have told in the beginning of the class if two objects are moving in same direction and if one object is trying to cross another object their relative speed be, be, will be difference of speed not sum of speed difference of speed why difference of speed this train is trying to cross this man but this man is not supporting that this man is going away and away that means this man is effectively increasing the time taken for the train na? or effectively decreasing the relative speed of the system the trains 54 km per hour is cancelled by the speed of 9 km per hour of the man or subtraction i hope that idea is clear so that means the relative speed in this case 
for the train to cross the man completely is 54 kilometer per hour minus 9 kilometer per hour. So, I am directly writing 45 kilometer per hour. But 45 kilometer per hour, finally answer is in meter and time is in seconds. So, 45 kilometer per hour need to be converted it into <coughs> meter per second. So, kilometer per hour to meter per second, the factor of 18 by, sorry, we need to convert kilometer per hour to meter per second. So, 5 by 18 you need to multiply with. So, that is the relative speed we can say uh, of the system for the train to cross the uh, running man in the same direction uh, running man. So, so then, uh, we can yeah so keep it as a keep it as a fraction itself and then we can simplify so this the time taken for that is 14 seconds so distance equal to speed into time we can use distance to be traveled is the length of the train itself so t is equal to this t is equal to speed into time speed is 45 into 5 by 18 into time is 14 now simplify this one second. Yeah, you will get a fraction that is just a minute. Yeah, you can simplify um, uh, the uh, fraction will be deleted. Okay, I was thinking that it may be a fraction. So, this is 5 times, this is 2 times, so 2 and 14 will cancel, 7. So, 35 into 7, uh, sorry, 25 into 7 will be 175. So, that length, yeah, this T is actually length of train, not time. So, I will take uh, X, otherwise it will be confusing with time. So, X be the length of the train. So, X is equal to 175. That means we got already length of train. Length of train is 175. Now it is little more clear. And when you got 175, look at the options. Only option saying 175 is the length of the train is option D. So the question is over. But if there were multiple options with 175 as the length of the train, how to proceed? With this 175, do just like previous question. 175 long train is crossing the platform of length P. So the distance to be covered is 175 plus P. 175 plus p is the distance, distance equal to speed into time, speed we already know it is 54 kilometer per hour but yeah here the man is not running, now the train is crossing platform only so only train speed we need to con consider but train speed is again in kilometer per hour so you need to convert it into meter per second by multiplying by 5 by 18, keep it as 5 by 18 so distance equal to speed into time and the time taken it is told it is 25 seconds, so into 25. So simplify this, you get the value of P. 18 and 54 cancels 3. 3 into 5 into 25 equal to 175 plus P. That is uh, 125 into 3. Uh, 375 is equal to 175 plus P. P is equal to 200, you will get. Platform length is 200, train length is 175. Did you all understood? Yeah, little time consuming question. <clears throat> but if you understood the concept, you can do this question well. So, as 175 is only one option, there you, you can finish. That saves a lot of time. So, if all of you understood this, again, improvisations can be made just like previous question. Try that. So, now I will discuss bot and stream. Bot and stream in gate at some, it was asked only one or two times. So, try this question. This is a bot and stream problem. How it is different from train problem, I will explain. Make a try once. Hope all of you are understanding the concepts you are learning today. We are finishing this topic today. Tomorrow we will come up with another topic. <coughs> Mm. 
It is a man can row, not the man. A man can row. Okay, I will start explaining basically the theory of uh, boat and stream problem. Listen very carefully. Thus, if you want to continue trying, go through it. But basic theory of boat and stream problem, I will roughly say. So, boat and stream problem, actually, boat can move in two directions. Either upstream direction or downstream direction. When the boat is moving in upstream direction, you can imagine what happens. For the boat, it is little tiresome now because it have to give an extra force because the water is pushing it down. So, the speed of water is, if I am calling speed of water, speed of stream, speed of river, all means the same. In this question, stream velocity, na? the stream speed of water is stream velocity. So, speed of water is down, going downward and the speed of boat is going upward. So, definitely the boat is trying to go up but what but the water is pushing the boat down. So, definitely here the relative speed will be speed of boat minus speed of water. This is the first concept you should be clear about. Upstream direction may hit though. Difference of speed will be the relative speed. Difference of which speed? There are only two types of speed in boat and stream problem. Speed of boat and speed of water. Speed of boat means the external speed by, by the engine of the boat. Speed of water means the speed of the river or speed of the water, natural speed of the water. Speed of stream, speed of water, speed of um, river all means same. <clears throat> and uh, speed of boat in still water means also speed of boat itself. Speed of boat in still water, don't get confused. In this question, the word is not used. But if in a question, if you are seeing speed of boat in still water, that means when the water is still, definitely only speed affected, only speed available will be speed of boat. Na? So, that is also same. Speed of boat in still water, speed of boat, both are same. Okay. So, if it is moving upward, speed of boat minus speed of water will be the speed. If D is the distance, D distance, speed will be speed of boat minus speed of water. So, if time needed, I am telling not about this question only, generally speaking, what are the two cases? Time is equal to distance d divided by speed. That is speed of boat minus speed of water. But when it is going downstream, if the boat is going downstream, like cycling, um, uh, cycling um, uh, after you get into a bridge, if you are going down the bridge, cycling is easy. Now you can go faster. Or speed of uh, speed of speed by which you are going will be faster than going up up the uh, bridge. So, same way, when you are rowing downward, speed of boat is supported by speed of water because water is also moving in the same direction. <coughs> so, total speed or relative speed will be speed of boat plus speed of water. Are you all understanding? Downstream hetho speed of boat plus speed of water hoga. Uh, upstream hetho speed of boat minus speed of water hoga. And if time is asked, definitely the distance, whatever distance divided by speed, that is distance by speed of boat plus speed of water. This is the case. <laughs> so, in this question, how this is ap applicable? The man can row at 8 km per hour in still water. 8 km per hour in still water, that means it is speed of boat. Speed of boat is 8 km per hour. If it takes him thrice as long to row upstream as to row downstream. So, yeah, you can assume same distance. To row upstream, the time taken is thrice the downstream time. That means if downstream time is t, upstream time will be 3t. That is what the question says. Three times this time. So, upstream time and downstream time we can equate just like this. So, upstream time will be 
distance by whatever be the distance we don't know that distance so i will take d as the distance distance by speed i told you when you go upstream speed will be speed of boat minus speed of water speed of boat is given as 8 minus speed of water speed of water is our final unknown now so i will take let x be the speed of water i am assuming let s be the x be the speed of water so 8 minus x will be the relative speed as it is moving upstream distance by speed and moving downstream same distance but speed will be 8 plus x. Did you understand why 8 plus x? Because moving downstream, I told you, relative speed will be sum of speed and distance by speed is time. And the connection between these two times, is if it takes him thrice as long to row upstream. So, upstream time is 3 times the downstream time. Sorry, this is 3t. So, 3 times downstream time. Downstream time will be shorter. Into 3 will be the upstream time. So, this is the equation. You need to simplify this equation to get the answer. Distance you can cancel and cross multiplying you will get 8 plus x equal to 24 minus 3x when you cross multiply. That is uh, 16 is equal to 4x. x is equal to 4 uh, kilometer per hour itself we need so 4 kilometer per hour is the final answer that is 4 kilometer per hour will be the answer hope this is clear to all of you so bot and stream basically this is the only thing you need to know then it is speed is equal to distance by time formula itself nothing different in the case of train you should understand how it is different in the case of train when a train is trying to cross another object the other train is opposing it that is in same direction it is opposing the speeds but in boat and stream case when the boat is trying to go in the downward direction when the water is in the same direction the water is pushing the boat down that is why you are adding up don't get confused about that in the case of boat and stream case in same direction speeds are added up because water is pushing it down but in the train and train case the thing is that the train is trying to cross another object when it is moving in same direction the meaning is the second train is moving away from train that is why it is opposing speeds in the case of boat and stream opposing speeds comes when it is going upstream because water is pull, pushing it down not supporting it so the opposing speed so we are subtracting that is how you need to understand hope this is clear to all of you Bot and stream, <coughs> much questions were not asked. So, uh, I think you got an overall idea. Please try this question as homework. Try this question as homework. Option B will be the correct answer for this question. And this also you can try. May take some time to try, but it is easy only. And this also you can try so all other questions we have discussed which came from this chapter you got speed distance and time idea i guess so let's meet tomorrow at 6 pm and tomorrow 11 am there is a youtube live on series formation chapter useful for gate exam and CSER exam and to tomorrow 6 pm gate general aptitude complete course second lecture in this channel so follow this subscribe this channel if you haven't if you are a new student please subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon so that you will get updates and uh, do like this video do comment on this video do share this video to maximum people that will be a big help for this channel to grow also and for more students to learn also if you feel that this is useful for more students let your friends know about it thank you all of you take care all of you have a good day or have a good night see you on the next class Thank mm -hmm. you.